Good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to tonight's session um, where we will be speaking about your motivation for and during your studies. Um, my name is Prof. Jeanette Moritz. Um, I'm from UNISA. And um, I hope that um, we are all warm. If you're in the southern hemisphere, I think the country is quite cold. So um, thank you for joining in. And those of you that might be listening um, later to the recordings, also a warm welcome to you. Um, we, I'm going to stop sharing my video for now, and then I'll start uh, put it back on as we progress through the through the presentation. OK, so tonight we'll be talking about um, the, the softer issues or what we sometimes perceive as the softer issues um, in our study, and that is our motivation and the issues um, that we either have starting off with or come across during our studies. So very often where you act now, if you've just started, your motivation might be very high. Um, you might um, have, have uh, given up quite a lot to be able to um, start your studies and you might have um, high levels of motivations. Some of you might be uh, in some uh, parts along the route of your studies and you might have come across some obstacles and your motivation might have um, been tainted by some of the obstacles that you have come across or that you perceived as having. So I hope with tonight's talk, it's more a talk than a presentation, we can address some of the study, uh, some of the issues that you might have experienced as as you um, uh, progress with your studies. So um, when we talk about our major, uh, motivation for our studies, it's very important to realize that your postgraduate studies is a a place of transition. If you are enrolling for a master's degree, you might need to now transition from undergraduate to postgraduate. If you are on, uh, in your PhD studies, you might have um, now transitioned from a master's study to a doctoral level. And in each case, there's, there are different expectations, there's different skills that you require, and there are different um, challenges that you might come across, or there might be um, also different rewards for you at the end. So it's very, very important to know that um, in transitional spaces, um, there's often the amb ambiguity in that you are not quite sure what is expected. You're often not quite sure what is the next step, um, or you might not be sure how to go about certain things. So when we talk about uh, transitional spaces, it's very important to, from the beginning, um, know what is expected of you. Um, so as you go through different levels, um, please remember that um, you are not alone and the feelings that you might experience um, is, is common. Um, I, I know that um, postgraduate spaces are often very lonely journeys and very lonely spaces. And being in a distance education institution might make those spaces seem even more lonely and more isolated um, and therefore often increases our anxiety. Um, often we we feel not just students, but in, in life in general, when we pro, uh, progress from one um, from one aspect in our life to another uh, aspect, we often feel like we novices or beginners uh, once again. Um, you know, when you went from primary school to high school, you felt like a newcomer and uh, 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 you, that you that you didn't really know. When you go from high school to undergrad studies, you might be a novice. Um, the same goes for for your progression through. Um, your postgraduate studies. So, um, and that's often heightened because um, 
we're not quite sure what are the skills required and neither are we sure maybe what are the expectations. So having said that, I want to clarify from the beginning, what is the expectation in essence of a master's level study and what is the expectation of a PhD study? And the reason why I'm saying that is that often I find in a master's study that we try and do too much um, and that decreases our motivation when we think that this is unsurmountable. And in a PhD study, we often think we just need to do the same as in a master's research, but just need to do it bigger or more of it. Um, and we become easy, uh, equally disillusioned when we realize I have um, collected data and I've written it up and now I think I'm finished with a PhD only to find out that I'm halfway. So it's very, I want to clarify from the beginning on a master's level, you need to demonstrate that you can conduct research independently. That's it. You don't need to have a unique contribution. You don't need to um, solve the world, world's problems. You don't need to do enormous studies that um, fill um, multiple gaps. In a master's uh, study or a master's level, you only need to show and demonstrate to the examiner that you are able to follow the research process. So you need to be able to demonstrate that you can do research independently. Um, and that's according to, to um, the, the uh, level descriptor outcomes on a level nine. Um, now it's a debatable point. I have yet to find a, a master student that were able to do their, their study uh, independently. Um, so often on a master's level, there is still a lot of support from the supervisor. But please keep in mind that that is the end journey. And don't try and overburden yourself to try and do too much. You've got a limited time to do a master's study in, so keep that in mind. On a PhD level, you need to produce a unique contribution to the body of knowledge. So not only is the scope wider and deeper, but um, after you have done what you normally would have done in a master's study, um, you now need to um, make a unique contribution to your to your field um, or to your discipline. This might include developing models or strategies or guidelines or theories. Um, and so the scope and depth is bigger. And I just wanted to clarify that from the beginning, especially on a master's level where we are often um, daunted by the prospect. Um, and if you keep in mind that if you can demonstrate that you can do research and follow the research process, you should be OK. So the next thing that I want to uh, press upon you is that postgraduate studies is a journey. Um, you will experience peaks of high success and productivity, and you will experience valleys of accomplishment boldrums. Um, those valleys are the points, your lowest points, where you feel that you can't carry on, that um, things aren't moving along. And high peaks might be when you might have been at a very high peak when uh, you got the letter from UNISA to say that you have been uh, chosen to embark on a master's or doctoral um, research. That might have been a high. A peak might be when you receive ethical clearance and you can now go to the field and collect your data. And a peak will definitely be um, when you have completed your examination. So there will be peaks, but um, be assured that there are always um, all valleys as well that we might feel quite desperate and um, feel that there isn't movement. And this might cause us to become easily disillusioned. We might feel paralyzed, desperate and alone. We all have it. You, we, if you are a scholar, um, that process never ends. 
Um, it's still the same for me when I embark on studies. There's always spaces where I feel frustrated and paralyzed and feel that I'm not moving along. So please keep a lot, keep in mind that these experiences are not unique. You're not the only one. Um, we all experiences, experience it and there's way to move beyond this. So for st starting off, when we talk about motivation, it's critical that you understand why are you doing postgraduate studies. So very often at the heart of our motivation may be a sense that the work we are doing is something that we don't want to do. We, you maybe feel pressured to do a PhD because that would be the next um, step in your career progression. You might be, uh, you might feel that you are pressured into doing a master's study for some reason, um, and it's not really what you want to do. Or you might be looking at a topic or a topic was assigned to you that you're not really interested in. Um, so we we get this lack of motivation either because we don't find uh, something interesting or we don't fully understand the importance or the scope or what we let ourselves into. So from the start, it's critical that you understand um, and that you find a topic that is interesting. Remember, you're going to be busy with this work for three to five or even more years. So please make sure that you understand for yourself um, why you want to study and that you find a topic that you find interesting and that will keep you motivated for a number of years. So it's it's also important that you ask yourself, what is the bigger picture? If we go back to the initial slide where we all had our graduation ceremony and there is um, a sense of accomplishment, and that could be a bigger picture that you um, strive towards completing your degree. But there might be a bigger picture beyond that. You might want to ask yourself, what is it that you want to be? Um, what do you want to have or what do you want to do with this degree? And if you can't answer these questions, your motivation might already be hampered from the beginning. So you have to be clear about why you are here. You also have to believe that it's possible. I find that the biggest thing when we become demotivated is that our thinking becomes clouded, murky and often negative. You are what you think. The more you tell yourself that I can't do it, the more it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more you say to yourself, um, I'm going to struggle or I'm not good with quantitative research or I um, don't understand something or my supervisor doesn't like me. The more your thoughts are negative, the more it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and your energy is sapped by that. So be careful what you think and be reflective about the spaces that you are in. There are, there are ways to get out of these spaces, but very often getting out of these spaces becomes with um, uh, having a meta conversation with ourselves about our thinking um, and doing something to um, change our thinking from negative mindsets to more positive mindsets. And we'll talk about that a bit later as well. The next very important aspect is that you have to get organized. It's a habit. Um, I, I, it's, it's been proven over and over again that um, if you are unorganized in your postgraduate studies, you remain unorganized. If your thinking is unorganized, then it reflects in your writing. Your writing becomes unorganized. 
if your reading is unorganized, then your writing is unorganized. Eventually, your conceptualization is unorganized. It's not only just about organizing um, yourself, which is very important, but it's also about organizing your research and getting your, your um, setup for your research organized. An organization it's a, is a habit. If you are generally a, a very unorganized person, this might be an excellent time to work on your skills to become more organized. If you are not organized, um, as I've said, it becomes a struggle to find information, to write information logically. Um, so it is very, very important that we that we look at what what is our organization levels and how can we possibly improve that? So when I say getting organized, um, the first step might be setting goals. And we are often very flippant about um, goal setting. You know, it's so easy to say set set your goal, uh, set goals and set them uh, in this way or that way. But I found that often um, if we are not um, used to setting goals, um, we often find it very difficult to stick to it. And if we don't reach our goal, then we can become even more demotivated. So what I suggest when I tell my students to set goals is to chunk your goals down. So your bigger goal might be to um, complete your degree in three years or five years. But how do you, from where you are now, how do you chunk it down? Do you know what you need to do today or this week or this month to get to that goal? So if you had to chunk down your research goals, for instance, um, if you are just starting, your first goal might be to um, read, and we'll talk about that in a moment or you might uh, want to jump right in and start developing your proposal. But even that is a, is a large chunk goal. So if you are busy with a proposal, then chunk that down as well on a daily or a weekly um, basis. What is it that you need to do on a daily basis? Um, and take focused action every day. Chunk your um, goals down to a daily goal. Um, and that might be a goal such as I will read one article every day. And you need to be able to measure that goal. Um, so it's a, a highfalutin goal like I want to complete my ethical clearance or receive ethical clearance for my study. Uh, in three months time is is a good goal to have. But what goals do you need to achieve on a daily basis to uh, get to that uh, bigger goal? So um, also remember that um, it, that you have family, that you have health and that you have friends um, and that it, that you not only set goals only for your studies. Um, please include in your goals, um, for instance, time with family, friends, um, time to look at your health, um, time to socialize as well. And we'll talk about that a bit later as well. And if you would like to have some assistance um, with goal setting, you might want to click on the link that I've uh, posted for the GROW model. The GROW model um, helps for you to reflect and think about your goals um, and is typically where you have a piece of paper and in the bottom uh, left hand corner you will say where you are now. And uh, top right hand corner you might say where you want to be and then you need to plot steps step by step. What do you need to do to achieve that outcome? And with each step, you ask yourself, what are the potential obstacles that I have and what are the strengths that I have to help me achieve that goal? Now, you could have a grow model for each week, for instance, 
uh, or you can have it for each day or each month. So please have a link, uh, uh, look at this link and um, the GROW model can maybe help you to plot out step by step how to achieve your next goal. Um, very important if you do don't know what the next step is, that you try and source someone that can tell you what the next step is. And if you don't know, then ask. Ask your supervisor, ask your friends or colleagues, ask the library, ask Google. Um, but it, you need to identify each step and be sure what the next step is for you to um, have a, a motivated journey. The next skill is um, I just wanted to talk about academic skills and content. Um, and what I said earlier, we are often when we're in the beginning, we think that uh, we have to read and reading is, of, is a very good uh, start. But what I find that is um, often when we start our studies and we start reading, we tend to dive too deep too soon and you might at this early stage already become confused and discouraged either by the amount of reading or that your reading is um, leading you along routes that you maybe didn't know about or that causes confusion or that you read about multiple aspects from different authors and now you feel that you are beginning to get stuck. Um, and in the beginning, I suggest that along with some reading, you also reflect on your academic research skills um, that is needed and that you use this time as well to understand what is expected. So this goes along with the previous slide of um, finding out what is the expectation and what is the next step. Um, so be careful very early on not to have a deep dive in reading um, and then you become demotivated early on. So um, if you need to understand what is expected of you in the course of or your course or your progression in your studies, reach out to current students or friends that have studied at this level before. You can read blogs or watch YouTube videos about others' experiences on a similar course or postgraduate study. Um, and this understanding can help you to reflect on aspects which you might find challenging or areas that you are likely to excel in. So very important, it's not always that you need to identify what is the obstacles. It might serve you very well to also identify areas in which you excel in. So it's not only about, oh, I can't read um, uh, critically or the supervisor said my 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 uh, the work that I submitted wasn't critical enough and become discouraged. Equally understand what you are good in. And when you feel discouraged, maybe move on to a section or an aspect where, where you feel confident um, and that you can move on. So I very often feel that student becomes discouraged when they feel paralyzed. Um, so you might feel paralyzed with a chapter or you might feel paralyzed, for instance, with your methodology. Then move on to a section where you do feel confident and you can maybe write. So if you feel stuck with the methodology, maybe work a bit on your literature review. Um, research we write up as a very linear process, but in practice, Practice, it's not a linear process. You will be going to and forth be, be, uh, between pieces of writing and chapters um, in a very iterative manner. Um, and it's not a step by step approach. So if you do feel that you are stuck, um, move to some some area that you feel more confident in or that you've made some progress in. Um, critical research skills, I often find that students um, get stuck because they um, don't have the basic skills and they maybe also don't know where to go to to understand or get training um, in these skills. And I've just added 
highlighted some critical um, aspects and where you could find support. So um, for your literature searches, identifying databases, uh, using keywords, um, please contact the UNISA library for training. Um, I've given you the link. Um, you can contact them. They can either organize training for you or they can help for a group, but there is training available. And this is such a critical, critical skill to have is that you are able to um, do adequate literature searches so that your reading becomes focused and your reading from the start is on a high level. Um, academic writing skills and research support. I've given you the link to where you can find support um, from UNISA for these aspects. So please don't feel that you are stuck and there's no one that can help you. Um, the UNISA library has a vast variety of sources, um, videos, books, links, training sessions um, and attend sessions like you do now with the postgraduate um, training sessions. Even if you can't attend all of them, please um, uh, link on and uh, if you've got time, then listen to the recordings. You can go back to the recordings more than once. So um, it's a very uh, great step that you are in the training already. So I am preaching to those who are already converted. But please keep on. Please be on the lookout for any other training um, outside of UNISA. It doesn't only have to be UNISA. There's excellent tutorials on YouTube, um, so please follow that up. Um, there is no need that you need to feel that you do not uh, have support or that you can't find support. Another very uh, important aspect is that you please trust yourself. There will be times where your self-confidence is challenged and you might start to doubt yourself and your abilities. Uh, often we feel insufficiently intelligent to produce quality research or skilled to produce quality research. And this often comes when we start comparing ourselves with others. Please remember that you are unique. Your background is unique. Your skills are unique. Your thinking is unique. Um, so please don't compare yourself with others endlessly and measure yourself and feel that you come up short every time. And um, when you are having periods of doubt, keep in mind and remind yourself that many smart people gave you this chance to succeed in their program. You were chosen you by, by a committee to embark on your master's or doctoral uh, research. There were some very smart people sitting on that committee when they chose you. They wouldn't have chosen you if they didn't think that you can do it. So when you are feeling low and demotivated, um, please remember this, that you are smart and um, you, you made the mark to be able to enter this program but you need to keep that momentum going by constantly becoming an active learner in the process. So assess your skills, your strengths and your weaknesses and develop an action plan where you do identify uh, a deficit or a skill that you need to maybe hone a bit better. Um, and keep up to date. It's so important that, um, you know, I often find master's students that progress into a PhD um, and they have taken uh, a gap period, uh, a year or two or a number of years. But it's quite a, a, a stretch, strenuous stretch to catch up on the latest um, 
methodologies or the latest movements in an area of study. So please be a diligent lifelong learner um, and assess your skills as you carry on. And once you've identified any deficits, then um, go back to your to your grow model and identify what is the steps that you need to do in order to move and progress in your studies. The next very important thing is to trust the process. This can be very difficult. So standards for degree completion, most uh, both in masters and doctoral levels, are often perceived as very ambiguous. Um, for you, at least, for your supervisors, uh, at times it might be for those who develop the program, they probably the ones that um, uh, had that sorted out the best. But for the rest on the journey, there might be times where this is incredibly ambiguous. The might, path might not be entirely clear or you might uh, not know what the next step is. Um, and Although this may be uncomfortable, communicate your feelings to your peers or your supervisor. Other than being therapeutic, um, it might also help you to uncover what the next step is. And if they can't help, they their uh, advice beyond just trusting the process. Um, please, even if it's difficult, trust the process. Many, many students have trodden this path before you. Many students have gone on this journey and have completed. Trust the process, so will you. And if it means that you make yourself um, some post-it notes where you put it on your computer screen or on your wall that says, trust yourself, trust the process and remind yourself what it is um, that you 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 signed up for and what it is that you want to achieve through this process. Um, a number of years ago, uh, there was a study done to identify what was the one um, skill or ability um, that was critical that made students complete their PhD. And um, because often if you had to Google what skills do I need to complete a PhD, they, they might list a number of skills, but this research identified the following ability that was the make, make or break um, in completing a PhD. And the skill was the ability to deal with ambiguity. That ability to deal with the uncertainty was the most critical skills skill for a PhD student to complete. You must remember on a PhD level that you are producing a unique contribution. You are the first to tread the space, not your supervisor, not your peers, not anyone else. You, you are the trailblazer. You will become the, the most knowledgeable person on this topic that you are making a unique contribution. So the path is ambiguous for you, but trust the bigger process. Others have gone before you and you will also um, uh, be able to complete. Trust yourself and trust the process. Make feedback your friend. I often find that when students receive feedback from supervisors or from examiners, that this is possibly the, the next big thing um, or the next thing that causes great distress in students is when they receive feedback. Um, please remember that feedback is simply information. Please don't take it personal. It might feel as if it's personal, and I do agree that some supervisors um, might not give feedback in a very kind manner. Please reframe and think of it as it's just their way. But in essence, feedback is simply information. It is a caution sign, it's not a stop sign. So please, when you receive feedback, 
Um, I remember when I got feedback from um, reviewers when I drafted my very first article and submitted it um, to a journal and I got feedback. I was so devastated. I didn't open that email for an, a month. I cried for a week. I was devastated. I, I was paralyzed. I didn't know what to do with the feedback. And after after I spoke to the supervisor and they calmed me down and explained to me that it's feedback, it's the process. Um, feedback has never been easy for me either. I dread the email coming through from a journal with reviewers comments um, because you, your research does have a personal aspect to it. But please try and frame feedback as information. Please try and um, frame it that it is to improve your work, not to debilitate you. And please don't ignore feedback. If you ignore feedback from reviewers or from your supervisor, it inevitably can and will taint the relationship. So supervisors take a lot of time to um, provide feedback. If you're not clear about the feedback, especially in an online setting where you might only receive feedback uh, on a document and it's only in track changes, um, please try and clarify if you're not sure what to do with the feedback. If you can, try and arrange a Teams uh, link up with your supervisor to have maybe a face-to-face -face discussion, even if it's online. Um, please uh, ask for clarity if you are not sure how to proceed. Um, so please, very importantly, make feedback your friend, not your enemy. So and a few other things that you can also do to keep yourself motivated is to assess your time commitments. Um, you need to spend at least, the very least, eight hours a week on your studies, every week, 52 weeks, probably a year, for the duration of your studies. You have to keep engaged and therefore you need to manage your time and assess your time commitments. Um, say no to distractions. So sit yourself down and ask yourself, what are the distractions that take me away from my studies? Is it family responsibilities? Is it work? Is it emails? Is it your phone? Is it games on your phone? Is it um, that you procrastinate by making excuses? Oh, I will first um, my desk so that uh, Prof Maritz said I needed to be organized. So I'm going to be organized. I'm going to pack my desk um, and then you never get to do anything about your research. So it's incredibly important to look at what is your distractions um, and to start to skillfully say no to these distractions. It also goes hand in hand with your goal setting. So set your goals limit your distractions and commit to the time that you set out for your studies. Um, if you do not commit on a regular basis, what I find happens is that it takes an enormous amount of time to reconnect with your research. Um, you need to connect with what did you uh, write last time? Where is the article that you read? Um, what did I now read about this? Oh, I can't find my notes. Um, so please keep um, your, your time commitments and that you don't have large lags where you do not engage with your research. If you've done a bit of writing and you are now going to stop for the evening or the day, then write yourself a note to say that this is where I stopped and this is the thoughts that I had. Um, to continue so that next time when you get to your writing, you know exactly where you were and you already have your next step written down so that you can immediately reconnect, for instance, with your writing. 
or if you have set out, you finished your goals for today, already plot the goals for tomorrow or the next week so that you know exactly where to pick up and that you don't have this disengaged lag of time uh, with your research where you become discouraged. And very important, create a network of friends, mentors and coaches. Um, I said before, it can be a very lonely journey. You have to reach out. Um, uh, very often there are groups that similar people start meeting together or create your own group where you can reach out to your peers as well or reach out to mentors. Mentors might not be in your field, it could be outside of your field. Um, and if need, find a coach. Um, but the bottom line is that you please uh, need to reach out and that you need to communicate when you feel uh, discouraged, when you feel demotivated. Um, and it depends on your relationship with your supervisor. Hopefully you have a relationship with your supervisor where you can speak to them, where you don't only have conversations around your research, but where you um, have a relationship where you can feel free to say that I am having difficulties. It might not be with your research. It might have pers it might be personal difficulties, but that you have a place where you can um, communicate and have an open discussion around these issues. I always ask my students to let me know um, if they have personal challenges or difficulties. I don't need to know the exact extent if they don't want to share it with me, but at least just tell me that I have challenges regarding A, B or C and um, I am taking a, a break for a week or two or I cannot commit to a step. Um, for submissions so that your supervisor is also in the loop and that they can be provide support um, as well other than just academic support. So please cultivate that relationship with your supervisor. Hopefully it's not only and always based on, on your research. So please communicate. Um, don't go underground when you have difficulties. Um, uh, the student, the supervisor then doesn't know how to reach out or how to assist you. So communication is very, very key. And then very close to, to the end is that you develop a broad set of interest. Now, this might sound, sound somehow counterintuitive and you might tell me, Prof Moritz, you're now confusing me. You said I need to uh, say no to distractions, but now you are telling me to um, have other interests as well. Um, but it is very important that you have other interests and hobbies um, and that you also take care of those. So it might be counterintuitive uh, counter to say I have a deadline to to commit to or um, but now I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to go to gym for for an hour and take a break or I am going to um, read a novel for a half an hour. These breaks also help us to re-energize, uh, to refocus. So if you have spent a number of hours um, working, uh, take a break, have a cup of tea, go for a walk, talk to a friend, but not to the extent that it becomes a distraction or that it becomes a way of procrastinating. So having fun and having um, other interests as well. You know the saying that um, too much work and too little play makes Jack or Jill uh, a, a dull person. And the same goes for your research. But please, having said that, also tell your family that um, the time commitment that your studies take is enormous. Uh, I, if you've been to any of my other presentations, I often say that Postgraduate studies is like a very jealous love affair with a very jealous lover. They take up all our time. They take up our thinking. We are constantly thinking about our research. We're constantly reading about it and uh, it can become like a very, very jealous lover. 
So um, it's also they they with us for a long period of time. So it is like having a, a real relationship. So please tell your family and your friends that they be patient with you during this journey and that there are times that um, you may be committed to your studies and that you can't engage into in certain social actions. Um, uh, also, if you are um, working, um, that you also clarify and, and speak to your employer and that they are aware that you are busy with your studies and see if there are any ways of support that they can give you, such as, um, you know, regular time, uh, leave time, or um, that you can maybe manage commitments in some other ways, um, especially towards the end of your studies when there is uh, a lot of pressure to um, um, do the last bits of works, to do editing, to hand in, or to maybe work on examiners' com comments. So there will be periods in your research journey where you might need to take time off or where you might need to um, you, uh, use of your leave um, to achieve your goals. But please never at the cost of your own health and especially not your mental health. Um, a lot of research um, has come to the fore now even before um, COVID, but um, definitely during and after COVID. And there's a, enough research to show that postgraduate students have higher uh, levels of mental distress due to anxiety, stress and other issues. Um, so please um, take care of your mental health. Um, if you have issues with your with with mental health issues, please um, have those taken um, care of take care of yourself um, and please don't let your postgraduate studies um, be the cause of greater mental distress or even uh, breakdowns in in um, at during or at the at the end of your studies it's it's certainly not worth it so please take care of yourself physically take care of yourself emotionally please ensure that you have the necessary support um, for uh, networks around you to sustain you through this journey um, we are just about um, at the end of, of the official presentation so with the next um, uh, slide. Before I show the next slide, I'm going to go through a visualization uh, exercise with you. And for this exercise, I'd like you not to stare at your screen, but for 80 seconds, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. So, um, at the stroke of me telling you to close your eyes, um, there's going to be a bit of silence and I just want to see if I can get some music playing on my side. So um, I'm going to ask you now for the next just over a minute, please keep your eyes closed. See yourself in your mind's eye walking across the stage to receive your degree. Hear the music playing. In your mind's eye, imagine what you are wearing. Who is in the audience? Can you see their faces? Is your supervisor on the stage reading your laudatio if you're a PhD student? Experience the emotions you are feeling. Joy, excitement. See the parents if you have in the audience your loved ones. 
it's a celebration for all of you. Hear the sound of the applause. See how you are kept and how your degree is handed over to you. See yourself walking off the stage and thinking to yourself, I did it. I have achieved the goal that I set out. Okay, and now you may open your eyes. And now I need to get <laughs> to get this presentation to to stop. So I'm going to unshare now. And uh, you may open your eyes. And um, I hope you have enjoyed the final visualization. And what I'd really like you to do is that in times where you feel demotivated and where you feel stuck and that you feel that you can't carry on, that you will go back to this visualization and close your eyes and see in your mind's eye how you walk across the stage to receive your degree and that you have experienced the outcome and that the hours of work were network that you spent was indeed worth it. And with that, I'm going to go over to the question and uh, answer um, aspect of, of the presentation. I'm just quickly going to um, see the questions that you might have um, posed. Um, there was just a, a thank you and let me just see the nail. I see there's three published. Um, but at the moment, I just want to see if I can move my screen and I might see the others. I'm so sorry, we're having load shedding. So um, if you. Um, um, let's just see. back on. Um, I hope that I can take the, the um, questions. Um, I set out two hours a day for my work. My supervisor at master's level, uh, level uh, the, so the problem is I read too much to write. I procrastinate. Okay. All right, the others seem to have been um, that you found um, it helpful. And um, I'm so sorry if it um, maybe uh, not um, come through at a stage. Um, we, we're busy with load shedding at the moment. Okay, so um, I hope that it was that it was useful. Um, uh, I'm sorry for, for this, but um, Danae and them will make available the um, 
the, uh, the slides for you and um, I then hope that um, let's just see I've got some some sound. Um, thank you, you really needed this. I hope that um, it serves you well in the in the future and that you can go back on these tips and um, keep well and I'm wishing you a very good evening. Bye bye.